There we go. We have a special guest in studio <laughs> in the house today, Brian Sumner. It sounds almost like summer. Yes. But no, one end didn't end with the other arc, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Really, really good. Yep. Uh, this is exciting. You're a pastor, right? Yes. But you're also a pro skater. Yes. That's so cool. And you're from England? Liverpool, England, home of the Beatles. Yes. <laughs> wow. Home of the. Hey, that's right. Home yeah. of the Beatles. Yes. Um, how long did you live in England for? 15 years. 15 and I got years. Sponsored, moved to America. Wow. And you've been here ever since? Ever since, yeah. Wow. And 44, you... so a long time. Wow. I'm more that's American cool. than English, actually, it's by now. So Yeah. yeah. How is that? Like the... I love it. Yeah? Well, you know, I mean, you're from, what, Mexico? And I mean, yes. you live up here. I mean, look at how spoiled we are. Yes, we we're are, man. We're podcasting, it comes to Mesa, <laughs> we're hanging out, so. This is cool. Okay, so we're going to kick off the episode with an emoji reaction all right and this is gonna be, this is this is your own idea so i'm just gonna go for it okay yes. here is the emoji for today is the blasphemous yes emoji and there's an idea behind it so let's kick off with that what's the yeah. idea behind this blasphemous emoji well you said you know what emoji would you start with and i said <clears throat> blasphemy because yesterday and um, two mormons and there's mormons in my neighborhood every neighborhood they came up to my house they've been hanging out they're very cool amazing young men and i was home just got back from jujitsu Hey, Brian, it's Wednesday. It's middle of the day. You said we could come by. I would have had them in the house and we would have got into it. And instead, I went outside and talked to them. Guys, you know, you're awesome. I see what you go through. You're doing your elder work, all the rest of it. Mormons are amazing families, but we have a different faith, a different gospel. What's blasphemous? Do you guys believe that Jesus and Satan are brothers? And they said, we do. Oh Yet we read in Genesis that in the beginning, God created And the Bible says the serpent, Satan, was the shrewdest of all the creatures that God created. But we read of Jesus in Colossians 1, 15, 16, 17, all things are made by him, for him, through him. So Jesus was never created. He always was. He's the invisible. You know, we see him in the New Testament now. He's revealed the fullness, the glory of God. Yet Mormons believe Jesus and Satan are brothers that's blasphemous so i asked them we unpacked a lot of doctrine we had amazing conversation I'm in my black shorts i'm hanging out it's relaxed the gardeners next to us blowing leaves very sweet young men but we got to preach the truth in love so mm. what is a blasphemous idea jesus is not the brother of satan and um, he's not michael the archangel like jehovah witnesses say he's god incarnate And um, like I said, all those verses God created in Colossians, Jesus made it. And even in um, Isaiah, we read the spirit of God, the Ruach made me. So Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. So that's your blasphemous idea to launch. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> cool, man. And you were telling me even before we, we, we got here, you know, we just kind of like hanging out in the, like we have a little lobby out here. And, you know, you picked up the guitar and you were asking a few questions, but the... I mean, we. I, I want to get into your story. Like, <laughs> you're a pro skater who has faith, who's now pastor, and all of that. But before we get to yeah. that, I mean, you were saying that uh, you had a pretty large following on your Instagram, and yeah. then because you started like preaching the gospel, and just like you said right now, you know, yeah. you're very open, and you started preaching the truth. Yeah. And you got shadow banned. So yeah. Uh, how was that? I mean, f going from like thousands and thousands of followers to yeah. like, okay, now I gotta kind of like start all over. What was that yeah. experience like? Well, I came to faith, you know, to those who were listening. You're writing for Tony Hawk. You're very well known. Obviously, God did a work in my marriage and all these other things. And so now, you know, as a Christian, life's different. But the trail over from being a skater is, you know, if you say to any skater who's over 30, who's Brian Sumner, they would know, you know, black hair, more emotional music, 160 pounds, way different than today, you know, bigger jujitsu, black belt, I mean, brown belt, all the rest. So what happens wow, is... Wow, you wear black belt? Brown I mean, belt. brown belt? Yeah, I've been doing it for a while, but I'm, I'm saying that to say, yeah. you know, I look different than I did, but my point is... Social media is starting. I'm typically more of an evangelist. I'm using Instagram. I'm using Facebook. I'm using all these resources. You have 20, 30, 40,000 followers and all these things. And suddenly out of nowhere, hey, your account's disabled. I don't go after people. I don't chase people. What do I do? I post sermons. I share many things like this. I might do a two or three minute video. I do what you do, a lot of quick, you know, reels and all the rest of it. 
hey, my Instagram, hey, my Facebook, it's all been shut down. What do I do? And so I post online, how do I get help? And so a girl who's a friend of mine says, oh, I work at Facebook. I'll get this handled. She goes in, looks at it. Oh, yeah, this is above my pay scale. I don't have access to this. I don't know why this happened. A few weeks go by. So I'm told I went against guidelines, but there's no reason. They said your account's going to be taken away. I couldn't even access it. But then I notice on my account there's some, like, Taiwanese lady selling shoes. So I, I try and record fraud and I can't. All my friends letting Facebook know, no response. Then another friend who's even higher up messaged me, Brian, I'll take get care of this right away. Happens all the time. Thinking it's been taken. And she says, oh, yeah, this is above my pay scale. And she tells me, you have been targeted. If you post certain things, like maybe if the Christian podcast gets out there enough and it's pushing practical values about male and female, God, we're made in his image, life, death, resurrection, those buzzwords or algorithms or what you hashtag will put you in a category and eventually that could happen. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to me, all that happened, do I care? No, but it's just relevant. It's a real thing. I have real friends who are going after child trafficking, who are fighting for the right causes, who are doing things. And so that's kind of blasphemous too, you know, being hated for his namesake. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. There's so much in that. Okay. So let's go over to... <laughs> Uh, I guess we, we can pick that up again in a little bit, but let's go over to your story. Yes. Okay. So you're 15 years old in, yeah. in England, in Liverpool, yes. Yes. right? Growing up, maybe, did you listen to the Beatles back then? Was oh, it a my thing? Mo or? My mom used to go see them play <clears throat> in the cavern. Wow. You know, and Liverpool's like this intense city. So the Beatles are everywhere, all this information, you know, all these statues. So yes, I listened to the Beatles. Um, I grew up playing this sport called football. You know, you use your foot and kick a ball. Over here, they call it yeah. soccer. I grew up playing <laughs> football to our listeners. <laughs> what, what, is the Sp what does the Mexican community call it? Football. Be and you know, where, you know where the term soccer comes from? Someone said, this is associate football. So they took the word associate and they slimmed it down to sock, like associate sock, soccer. That's the best you guys come up with, whoever that was. It doesn't was. make it sense. doesn't make sense. So everyone's like, no, you play soccer. Like, no. Yeah. You, you throw that funny leather loaf of bread thing that you think's a football. We play football. We play it with our feet. Yeah. So I listen to the Beatles, all that kind of stuff. Pink okay. Floyd, Bob Marley, wasn't raised in the faith, open or whatever. So Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we're in Racing the Faith. Uh, started <laughs> doing skateboarding yes. and was, did you know that was your, your passion? Did you know, or did you try other things? Were you into like music or other it arenas? Was or? It was immediate, you know, like Liverpool's <clears throat> kind of rough, probably like I'd, I'd imagine, you know, parts of Mexico are, mm -hmm. you kind of know who the tougher kids are, the crazier kids. Yes. We've got a history of a lot of love, the famous Liverpool song. You'll never walk alone because you had world war two, England's rebuilding mm. a lot of people working in the docks, you know, very hard work and driven people like the Mexican community as well. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife's dad's Mexican. So I, I, wow. I get the culture, you know, so there's me growing up. What am I going to do? Playing football. Didn't really care. Did some martial arts. Love that but never really got into it and then at 13 picked up a skateboard and i just fell in love with it so much so that my friends would say you know at school if you had to throw something off the bridge your girlfriend or your skateboard what would it be and i <laughs> and i'd laugh i'd laugh but i'd be like I'd, be like I'd laugh but i'd be like you know she'd be swimming in my head i fell in love with skating i skated yeah. for the next two years and then the skating was getting bigger you know getting an invite mm. from some american companies to come and live in america <clears throat> That changed my life. So, yeah. Yeah. And some of these, com where these companies like, because we're, I mean, you're living in Huntington Beach and yeah. uh, this podcast is right here in Costa Mesa. Yeah. And Costa Mesa is kind of like known for being a yeah, little bit of a Mecca. hub, right? Of course. Yeah. So were those companies like right around yeah. here or no? So you had the whole boom of, you know, like the 70s and the Dogtown and the Z-Boys, all the stuff we know about. Then you had like the Tony Hawk vet stuff and then that slowed down. And so they're like, what are we doing? Street skating came back in. So then from that there's brian there's a bunch of pros that went before me kind of a british invasion a couple of years before jeff Rowley, tom penny you know very famous skaters now renowned legendary i'm still friends with all those guys you know love all those guys but then they're looking for skaters like me who can be the next kind of era coming up you get invited over i'm riding for flip that doesn't work out 
I get invited to ride for Tony Hawk's Birdhouse. And so right here, as you're saying, you know, Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, that's where I moved to. You've got San Diego, you've got Los Angeles, you've got kind of the middle of America, but really the East Coast. That's where skating is. Mm -hmm. um, and it just blows up. And here's the thing. Your sponsor is an amateur. They're paying for your apartment with four or five of you, you're getting a couple hundred dollars a month. Then skating blows up. Now you're making, you know, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month as a professional. Wow. You're riding for Tony Hawk. <laughs> you're touring the world. Incredible. So it's so you know yeah. you got a pro board, a pro shoe, pant, tech deck, <laughs> everything. So I'm saying that to say I had no clue that this would happen. Skating wasn't that big at the time, but as you move here, the next four or five years, you know, because you're you're 42, you said. So you remember when. Tony Hawk started being on TV or in commercials or who's this, you know, your grandma would know who he is. When he got that famous skating blew up, all this money's getting thrown on it. More skateboards are selling. And so it created a life for me, which is crazy. So. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> and I mean, in, in two years, you pretty much picked up enough to become a pro because you said you started at 13. Yeah. Fifth, I, and I was, I was pro when I was 19, but yes, what happened was you go back to, 25 30 years definitely 30 you're doing bonelesses and all these old tricks that maybe you're not all in and doing kickflips well when i started all the flip tricks were in and all the switch dance skating so what do i do i do all the new stuff so all these older guys are kind of coming out i'm kind of becoming relevant because i'm jumping downstairs and handrails so i just happened to start at the right time where I was skating switch as much as regular i was looking at the videos as much as the old ones so i noticed you know and I'm winning contests, and I'm getting in the magazines, and then I come to America. I sound crazier than this, my accent at the time. You know, I sounded <laughs> really English, very, yeah. you wouldn't even know what I, you You've would, been Americanized. Americanized. <laughs> so it blew okay. up, and it was great. And so, yeah, I'm in America. I love it. Wow. Okay, that's that's a pretty epic story. Uh, okay, so coming here, yes. what, what happened in your life that, because you said you grew up kind of like without, without like faith. faith, right? So what happened in... In, what yeah. was the journey to faith? Because now you're a pastor and you're yeah. pretty like, you know, vocal about it, yeah. right? You have a podcast we can talk to yeah. about like about <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, like, what was the story of you know finding faith? I guess I'd say England, in a lot of ways, is, is like Mexico because Mexico is a very heavy Catholic faith. A lot of churches, yeah. you know, very Southern America, we have that. In England, you have Church of England, so you have kind of a religious system. But mm -hmm. all your friends growing up were they like die-hard Jesus freaks, or were they just like I'm Catholic. Yeah. Mary, drink some booze, live however. I'm Catholic. It's like a, it's like a belief that's over there mm -hmm. on your deathbed. That's how it was for me. I didn't meet one Christian growing up. My friends that said they were Catholic might have gone to church. Who knows? Wow. So really, I came to America with my mindset of philosophy, open to, you know, the esoteric religions and new age. Because Liverpool... You've got every ethnicity, every culture. So I'm hearing, you know, from George Harrison and that influence, you know, Zen and mysticism. Mm. I'm hearing from Bruce Lee about Taoism and, you know, the mind and philosophy. So to answer your question, I come to America, I'm skating, I'm professional, life's good. I fall in love with a girl from California, you know, speaks with an accent like Americans, drives on the wrong side of the road, calls football, soccer, but we fell madly in love, you know, married within, what, four months of being together, wow. drive out to Vegas, don't tell anyone, <laughs> get pregnant, now you're a year or two in, but think about it, if we were friends back then, you'd be like, Brian's killing it, he's making great money, he's got contracts to all these sponsors, he's touring the world, he's living the American dream, mm. biblically, he's gaining the whole world, mm. but he's losing his soul, now I'm married, you know, now I have a son, everything's working out and i was the kind of guy like i feel like i was a good guy as we all think you know we try and mm. do the right thing good parents but i didn't know god and so now to answer your question married for two and a half years or so beginning to fight like crazy stubborn people is this the wrong thing did i get married too early at 19 she was 21 before long we're fighting we're divorced i'm struggling and i say you know what I need to figure this out. Like, I'm in America. Yes, I'm a citizen. I've, I'm divorced from this woman. I begin to look at all the different faiths, you know, all the different religions, all the different things. And I began to say, what's true? Because I really realized this. I told a guy this yesterday at the skate park over at Volcom, you know, 20, what, tw two minutes from here, actually. Um, either you're made or you're not. That's your options. Either you built the studio 
or it's happenstance. You obviously built it. Either Beto was made or not. Either Brian mm. was created or not. There's no other option. I don't care whether you believe in Christianity or not. Either you came from time plus chance plus matter, some primordial soup, lightning, whatever you want to say, a big bang. You just, ha that happened. I don't care about the podcast, really. I don't care about the guitar, even my kids. Let's, it, let's just evolve then and survive of the fittest. Who cares what COVID is? Who cares whatever? Or... Mm. Someone claims he made you, and if you were made, either they bail, and that's kind of mean, like we're just here for no reason, or, mm. so if I open up my phone right now and I show it's 1240, what's this date based on? Life of Jesus. What's mm. today's calendar based on? What's the day you were born based on? So there's something about this Jesus guy? Is he the white, blonde-haired guy we see in Hollywood? No. What do we see in the scriptures? Is he from Mexico? No. <laughs> Who is he? So I began to look at all these different faiths. <clears throat> Rastafari, you know, the Bible comes down the Nile, becomes the Pibli. And Buddha, who left his family and meditated, sounds like a great guy. You know, tell me about my life. Tell me about you. Tell me about the cross. No. I began to look at the Bible and other things to prove there was no God because I realized if there's no God, my life doesn't matter. Wait, um, you were looking at the Bible to prove, prove there that there's no, no God. God? There's no God. Okay. Yeah, yeah. because <clears throat> let's say you come to me and my life sucks, it's crazy. Hey, like, listen, man, like, life doesn't matter. So if you want to take your life, who cares? Your marriage doesn't matter. Your kids don't matter. Oh, no, Brian, they, they matter. You feel something. It doesn't really matter, though. When you're dead and gone, all legends die. You know, legends don't last forever. They're gone. Mm. So I'm trying to disprove this, and I open up the Bible, chapter one. In the beginning, God created. And what does God say? Genesis 1, 26, 27. Let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. I read that and said, wait, so I'm made in your image? I'm not just them, roadkill. I'm not just the possum or the cat you ran over this week that's just mush and guts. You're saying some God made me? Okay, well, if you made me, why does my life suck? That's a good question. If you mm -hmm. made me, God, why did grandma die? Or why is someone terminally ill? Or why do things happen to kids that shouldn't? If you made mm -hmm. me, God, and I'm in your image, what does God say right away? Genesis 2, 3. Well, I put you in the garden. And I said, you know what? To you and your wife, you've got everything. It's beautiful. It's good. God saw that it was good. But just don't eat of that tree. And we ran over there and we, we ate of the tree and we put it on a podcast and we filmed it. We put it on Instagram. We're all about the tree. All of us have done that. You know, all of us have sinned and mm. fall. Okay, so God, you're saying that we chose that. And God says in that verse, in the day you eat of it, you will die. Didn't say I'll kill you. He said, Brian, Adam and Eve made that choice. Scientists, geneticists, they'll tell you today that we came from one mother, one father, Regardless what you believe, if you think we evolved, we evolved from those. With this ground, wow. with it, you know. So I'm reading all this, saying I don't believe in God. This is nonsense. I come from England. God is something that you <clears throat> and I would go to a fireplace, you know, campsite, and yeah. you're talking about Bigfoot. I'm talking about aliens, and someone talks about God. That was as much as you thought about God. Wow. Jesus was some church thing. They want your money. They mess around with kids. Like, what mm. is this junk? I don't need this skateboarding. Yeah. But now, as I'm reading the Bible. And I can go into that more the way God began to reveal himself, but it started with reading in Genesis and saying, wait, this world's fallen. God says, you'll die, wait. So there's cancer because of the curse. People die because of sin. I'd never thought about it. So mm -hmm. and what what so you picked up the Bible? Was there any <laughs> anyone that said, Man, maybe you gotta check this book out? Or because you're taking it from like a skeptical perspective, yeah. but at this point it's it's kind of like speaking to you. Yeah. And What I've noticed is that it doesn't do the same for everybody. Like some yeah. other people could like start reading Genesis and be like, man, this doesn't make sense. Like I've been yeah. reading Genesis to my kids yeah, and they're like, it's violent. Like, no, everybody's <laughs> like getting married to like their daughters and like the, the <laughs> husband with multiple wives and yes. things like that. And they're confused, you know, yeah. like, and yeah. I'm like, well, this is before the law of Moses, right? When he yes. comes down with the commandments. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, all that to say, it's just sometimes for people, it could be like confusing yeah. and dismissed. Yep. But it seemed like God really started speaking to you. Well, you know what happened was, so I'm skating, I'm divorced, and mm. getting in fights in Liverpool a lot. You're kind of passive aggressive, <clears throat> fight or flight. There was one time when I got in like about eight fights in a month in California. I didn't start any of them, got in fights. And people, you know, I'm just out with my friends being crazy, whatever skateboarding when you go skate you don't get a skateboarding ticket if i'm skating at a school with you and a cop shows up and you're like he can't be here okay we'll leave and the cop just wants to give you a ticket there's no such thing as a skateboarding ticket 
Yeah. You're getting a vandalization or trespassing ticket. Mm. So now I have all these things on my record and I have, wow. commu I have community service and the community service, I go through the whole list and the very last thing, <laughs> Christian thrift store. And I'm like, a Christian thrift store? So I'm going to go to a Christian thrift store and find some old cool shirts or pants or whatever. And I can hang out with these crazy Christians. And I'm already trying to read the Bible. I end up going there for seven months because I was allowed to travel while I was doing it because I have a career to provide for my family. But what happened was I didn't have a Bible. And I remember walking downtown Huntington, Huntington and I said, okay, God, I need a Bible. And this is crazy. I need a Bible. I'm walking through Lake Park and I walk by the bench that I walk by all the time and sitting on the bench, all yellow, <laughs> a New Living Translation wrapped in film what? was like a $50 Bible about as big as your laptop sitting there. <laughs> and I walk up and I'm like, you're kidding me. And yeah. I'm answering your question. I got that Bible. I didn't go downtown. I went home and I got a pink highlighter. And like your kids, I read the Bible from front to back and I highlighted all the pink things. And I should probably do an episode of my podcast where I go back to it and I go through all the things and said, because, you know, you still have it. I just still have it. Wow. Methuselah was 900 or something years of age. Okay. What's going on? There's a guy who gets his testicles quashed, quashed in it. There's a time, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, let's be, uh, you know, there's a, t and, and to answer your question, a lot of the humans did things that were very wrong. God didn't tell David to have this many concubines. God didn't tell him to do this. They made these choices. It wasn't best case scenario. They wandered in the wilderness because they didn't listen to God. But here's to answer your question. Some were saying it was bad. Some were saying it was good. I was asking loads of questions. If I work for a skate company and you were there and you were a Christian, I was coming in your office and like, hey, what about this? I was messaging rabbis and all this. But what happened was... I read Genesis, were made in his image. I read about the tree that we'd fallen. Okay, this is the answering the question of the case. This is why we'll have to sleep tonight because we're tired. This is why we need food because our bodies get drained. This is why these lights could get so hot if we were here for four hours because we're, you know, we're passing away. One, this is why we're aging. So God, if you're so good, what did you do? Well, God shows up to Adam. What are you doing, Adam? God knows what he's doing. He's asking Adam, where are you? God mm -hmm. began to clothe them right away. God begins to deal with Adam. Cain slews Abel. We see this whole thing. And to answer your point about Moses, what happened, as you're reading, you see God. And I'm reading this for the first time. I'm looking for dinosaurs. I'm looking for demonic. I'm looking for all this stuff. I'm looking for UFOs. I mean, ancient aliens is big on the TV right now. You know, Giorgio with his big hair. I'm looking at all this. Well, it must be in the Bible if it's real. And where are unicorns? Mm. God says to Abraham, through you, I'm going to bless the world. Then we get to Exodus 20. Here's the Ten Commandments. Have I broken any? I've broken all of them. I'll be preaching to kids and say, have you ever broken one of the Ten Commandments? If you have, raise your hand. If you're not raising your hand right now. You're sinning right now because we all have. <laughs> Wait a minute, God. You're showing me our state and our issues and our struggles. The Old Testament just reveals to you and I that we're not good enough. Mm. But here's what's crazy. I was about 170 pounds then. You know what this is because you live in our area. I was a vegan. Picture being a vegan reading the Old Testament. Picture being a vegan and because you're bad, we go kill the lamb or we kill the bull. Mm. I was all like the Smiths, Morrissey, don't hurt animals. And I'm reading this book where already, you know, <laughs> oh boy, there's yeah. men's junk getting squashed. There's, there's, there's bears coming after kids because they call the prophet Baldy. Um, someone living 900 years of age. I mean, Abraham's wife, she'd been through menopause probably twice. You know, by the time <laughs> she's getting kid, uh, This is a radical book. Yeah. And so picture being a vegan, you don't kill animals. Now you're hearing, oh, every year because you're bad, put your hands on the scapegoat and put it outside the city. You're hearing kill the sacrificial lamb, put our blame on some innocent lamb. You're hearing that the angel of death's going to pass, but did you put the blood over the doorposts? Okay, we'll escape death. I'm reading all this. I'm still fighting with my ex-wife. I'm still making great money. I get to the New Testament 400 years from Malachi to John, uh, Matthew, and we read this story. So you read it, you read it like from like page from, to page? From page to page. Okay. I was reading the Hebrew, I was reading the Greek, I was, I don't know, everything. <clears throat> I wanted to know, you know, what's Leviathan? Um, a unicorn. When I read that a unicorn, uni means single and corn just means horn, it's a one horned rhinoceros or like mm. wildebeest. 
There's no mystical unicorns in the Bible. I mean, the weirdest things was people with six fingers and toes, Goliath and these giants, the Genesis 6, the Nephilim, the divine realm. I mean, there's stuff in there that we don't talk about a lot that's very real, you know. Mm -hmm. But then you get to the New Testament. I'm still not a believer. I'd hear all about God. Here comes a guy called John the Baptist who says of his cousin, Think and think about this. This is weird. You might not even realize how weird this is. Mm -hmm. We're hanging out with John the Baptist, and some guy comes walking down the banks of the Jordan, and John says to you and me, check out the Lamb of God. Okay, I've never told you a human being is a lamb. It's a weird mm -hmm. statement, but they knew exactly what he meant. Behold, the once and for all sacrifice, the Lamb of God. Wait a minute. Are you saying all those offerings point to Jesus? Are you saying the scapegoat that was sent outside oh. the city, Jesus died outside the city? Are you saying the blood that was shed, that it was outside this building today, we wouldn't die because of the blood? Wait a minute. You're telling me all this madness I'm reading about, you know, riding into the city on a donkey and born of a virgin. All these prophecies in Psalm 300 plus are all pointing to this Jewish Messiah who showed up. Okay, well, now I have a problem with this. Because if he's really who he says he is, and here's something maybe our listeners don't get, do I just believe like, oh, I'm Catholic or I'm Christian or I'm Mormon or I'm atheist? Is that all it is? No. When you read the Gospels, it's a very different story. It's this Messiah who's demonstrating the kingdom, who's confronting sin, who's confronting Pharisees, and what he tells them is something so radical that a lot of times atheists, agnostics, unbelievers can't understand Nicodemus comes to Jesus in John 3 and says, we see what you're doing. The wedding in Cana, supposing you're a prophet and all this stuff. We see this. And, and Jesus says, you can't see the kingdom unless you're born again. Mm. I'm reading this. And I say, what does he mean? Mm -hmm. You're telling me I can't see it. I can't understand it. I don't know what the inside of the studio is like unless I enter the door. He's telling you that, Brian, you're dead in sin. The payment for your sin's death. God has sent someone through the lineage of Abraham, this prophets, priests, and kings who spoke of him. I'm reading this, and I'm still believing at the end of my life, like the Simpsons, we go up the golden, you know, the, the escalators and the golden gates, and we're like, okay, I guess we chose the right religion. That's not Christianity. Christianity is you can believe that day and believe, and God opens your eyes, changes your heart, opens your ears. You become born again. I'll put it like, and I was reading this before being a believer. Jesus says to Peter, who am I? Peter tells him who he is. He says, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Atheists say to me, prove to me he's God. I go, I can't. Why? Our faith is subjective. The, no. Christian, the Christian podcast faith is subjective. Mm -hmm. God has made it so you have to pursue him. That if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Mm. God has made it so that you are the one that needs to hear and pursue. I wow. can point the way. The universe declares his majesty. Yeah. Even the universe. Think about what it is, the universe. Oh, I worship the universe and blah, 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 mystic and rocks and crystals. Mm -hmm. All the universe is is the single sentence. You're worshiping mm. the single sentence. Wow. In the beginning, Brian, God created it. And we're worshiping created over creation. I was having a massive challenge. I'm finishing community service. I'm reading all these extra books. I'm making food for the, uh, the guys in the church to get extra time on my community service. I knew about God, but I didn't know him. And I was about to encounter him. Yeah. What do you want to say? <laughs> Is your mind blown? Yeah, yeah. No, totally. <laughs> I mean, but so so what happens? So, so you're about to meet this guy, right? God. Uh, I mean, yes. how long did it take you reading? Seven months. Seven months. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's epic. Okay, but, so what happens? So I buy a house, still fighting with my ex-wife. She's living with her parents. I'd moved into an apartment for a while. And I'm like, you know what? I was depressed and suicidal. I'm not like that. It's more that I'm just so full of emotion. I don't even want to be here. Bleep, 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 whatever. I'm, if I lived in Texas, I probably would have, you know, sadly then took my life. It's crazy to think sitting here now. Wow. So I'm reading this. And there's a famous song from a band called Love Song, Calvary Chapel. And they say, many know him well, meaning Jesus, others just by name. So I knew him as name. People know who he is by name. But do I know him? And when you read the scriptures, the whole idea is this. Everyone's dead. Everyone's lost. That famous movie years ago, The Sixth Sense, I'd see, I see dead people. Mm. Everyone I drive by today, they're dead. 
our parents that don't know Jesus, they're dead. Spiritually, they're dead. You cannot see the kingdom, Nicodemus, Brian, Beto, unless you were born again. Someone listening, you cannot believe this. My podcast is called Foolishness. Why? Because the message of the cross, Brian, whoever, is foolishness mm. to those that are perishing. But mm. to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I was wow. hearing this, buying this house, finishing community service, came home one night, got in a whole fight with my ex-wife. She goes to bed. I'm in the other room. Our son's four or five now. And I'm looking. I'm on the floor. I'm just tired of this broken marriage. I'm tired of everything. And I literally, I'm reading in the Hebrew. I'd finished Revelation now. I'm through it all. And I remember the story in Exodus where you have God meeting Moses in the burning bush. And he says, I am that I am. You know, or what, what is is meaning I'm everything. Saying to Moses, like, who are you? Mm-hmm. I'm, I am. What does that mean? I'm everything. I'm what holds these microphones in place. I'm what holds the graphics on this. I'm what holds the oxygen coming out of my mouth. Moses, you're a man. You're a shepherd. You, you think you're going to do something? I am. I'm reading this. I'm in a fight with my ex-wife. And I was going to God to fix my life. Make it not hurt, make it easy, make it whatever. I was 19 over here, just becoming a citizen. No one's giving me good advice. I wasn't an alcoholic or some crazy. I was just wound up. Now I'm realizing it's all coming together. It's an issue of sin. I was reading about sin. I was reading why Jesus came. But Mm. Jesus came to tell us you've missed the mark, you've fallen short. And a lot of times what Christians do... They don't want to talk about the gospel. They don't want to talk about sin, repentance, deliverance, sacrifice. They want to paint this nice picture. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. We've got to hear the bad news that, Brian, you've broken the law. James 2.10 says if you've sinned in one place, you're guilty of it all. So one lie? Well, you know, Pastor, I'm a good person. Why do you die then? Why do you die if you're a good person? I helped Grandma cross the road. Good, that's a good deed. Oh, I've never done this. You've done something. No one's perfect. Only one is perfect. The only one who was never meant to go to the cross was Jesus. Yet he went because we're all deserving of it. He's the only one that was never meant to go to the cross. He has no place being there. Deuteronomy says, cursed is the man who hangs up on a tree. But Jesus went in a place. So this is hitting me in these few minutes when I'm like, I'm so sick of this woman and myself and how I act and fighting and swearing and punching holes and getting mad. And it was like, God's like, yeah, the issue is... There's a chasm between us. Mm. Your sin, you've, you're eating the tree. We, we're always going to struggle with eating the tree. Don't, don't, we're not be saying that, folks, but our flesh is weak. But the point is that as I'm sitting there, I'd never really cried out to God as my Lord and Savior. I'd never said, I need forgiveness. I need this being born again. I, I need the sacrifice. You know, why did Jesus come? To seek and save that which was lost. The Holy Spirit came into the well to convict it of its sin. So, in that moment, in 2004, on my knees, like crying out, and this is what's funny. I'm like, God, and I wanted to be specific so God knew, you know, I'm like, God of Abraham, Isaac, this is real. I'm on my knees, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, um, the tetragrammaton, those four letters, you know, Yahweh, can you hear me? I know you can. I need forgiveness. I need redemption. I knew I needed what the cross offered. And in an instant, it was like this. All the Bruce Lee books, I read everything. All the philosophy, all my old interviews are full of just nice sayings, you know, and Eastern philosophy and what the Beatles brought in and Bruce Lee and everything he borrowed, you know, the be like water and idea. In one instant, it was like, I'm in a room crying out to God. And it was like this invisible, tangible presence was there and it was like i'm being forgiven god is at work it was outside of the bible the bible points the way the bible's alive but it was all of that hitting me and i just knew that i knew and every wrong thing i thought about god like like if i tell you just stop believing in jesus you can't right you can't even yeah. if you went out and did crack today and chased a bunch of women you shouldn't and did the craziest mm. you'd be in prison after doing something crazy like People say all the time, how do I know God's real? Well, well, do you know that sin's real? Well, yeah. Aren't I letting him down? You're always going to let him down. Don't live in sin. Don't thrive in sin. But in that moment, my eyes were opened. I became born again. The dead, the sixth sense, that person, Brian, was born again. The heart was awakened. And I was like, wow. And the Holy Spirit convicted. 
Yeah. I spent another 30 minutes crying out, I can't believe this is real. I come to faith. She comes to faith in three weeks. We get remarried within the next three to six months-ish in what? August. What? And now my son's 22. He's married. I was going to yeah. go to jiu-jitsu with him today, but uh, he's sick. Mm. My daughter's 16, <coughs> taking her to Japan in a few months. And my son, Jude Micah, is uh, 13, and we're going skating later. So God is good. <laughs> okay, so... I mean, that's epic. I think coming to Christ, finding Jesus, uh, having the Bible make sense. I think that's one thing. And I think some people can even resonate with that. Yeah. Now, the part that's that's maybe even like a step further is because I understand also like I want to share this good news. Right. Yeah. But from that to like becoming a pastor and like even like your podcast is pretty um, focused on like sharing good news. Right. Yeah. So. What was that journey like? I mean, because not everybody that comes to Christ necessarily needs to become, yeah. okay, the lead pastor of, of something, right? Yeah, but yeah, of course. How, how can, I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess can people can contextualize God? it, right? Yeah. But yeah. but what was it like for you, like um, <laughs> the, the becoming a pastor, right? Well, <laughs> you know, I'm writing for Tony Hawk and all these companies. So I see all these Christian ministries doing skate and surf and snow ministry. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever's in my hand, give to you, Lord. Mm. So I remained in the skate well for like another two to five, maybe eight years. I had some of the same sponsors. I would witness to people. They knew Brian was a Christian. His mar marriage is being restored. What's he doing? But I began to get invited by people like, you know, Brian Welch or Luis Palau or Franklin Graham or, or Stephen wow. Baldwin come to these events. So I'd show up. And I didn't even know how to speak. I'd be like, I just blast people for five yeah. minutes of my story, a hundred thousand people in some like Kenya. I just say it and I'd be like, what am I doing? But I felt I had to do this. Wow. Now to speak to people, here's what we got to realize. In Ephesians 4, there's apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. So there's the, what's often referred to as the fivefold ministry. Whether you say apostles are Old Testament, I mean, are New Testament, and they walk with Jesus, is one thing. Whether you believe there's apostles today, whether you believe there's prophets today, you can vary in your theology. But the point is, these were given as gifts to the church. So mm -hmm. Paul tells Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. There's a specific work of an evangelist. We're all called to go. So if you say, Brian, you're so fired up, I'm an evangelist. I don't mean a televangelist. I don't mean on jets mm -hmm. with $20,000 suits <laughs> and Versace coats hitting people. Yeah. You know, the people have repented of that, thankfully. But if I'm an evangelist, you should feel like you need to evangelize people because I'm a gift to the church. Not me, not Brian, don't hear that. But when I'm around a pastor, I feel like I should shepherd people. When I'm around a teacher, I feel like I want to hear theology. If you're around someone prophetic, I feel like I'm leaning into like... Because God's not giving us new revelation, but he could have told you to do this podcast. He could have told you to marry your wife. I still believe the spirit speaks. If not, is it just for boldness? Why are the gifts so focused on 1 Corinthians? And we see it in Romans and we hear about it. You know, so my point is to... We're all regular folk. I mean, most pastors might only get to witness to people twice a week in the service or in the middle of the week. How do we live this out? We are all parts of the body. So when you hear Brian, you should be hearing go and evangelize, preach, teach, reach. When you hear a teacher, you should be hearing the word of God's alive. When you hear a prophetic, you should be hearing a bend to the spirit. So how do we live this out? Even the idea of going, if you study the word go in the Greek, it's profound. Like if you really get in, you get into a lexicon, you might never have heard this, you know, 98% of Christians haven't. But if you study the word go, it means go. <laughs> and all it means is this. I can't go to Kenya and then as soon as I get there, I've got to go again. I've got to go again. I've got to go again because how can I do anything? But I feel like I'm called to where I live, but I go all the time to these random places. But if you work at Starbucks... Go to Starbucks and intentionally live into the kingdom. Don't say what they say. Don't do what they do. Don't live how they live. You know, we're in the world not of it. Daniel was a massive witness when he was exiled to Babylon in one of the most satanic occult places with the mascara and the makeup. And that's good. If you're in your emo bang like mascara, I'm not saying that. But it was pure Satanism, what they were focused on. And the Bible says of Daniel and the other Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they purposed in their heart. They made a decision. Mm. They didn't have to sleep with everyone, do all the drugs, be caught up in 
in the world, and I get it. The flesh is weak. I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't fall into sin, but I'm saying you're going to wrestle. But what Daniel did, what you can do, you live your life. And here's the thing I have to defend. In the last 20 years, we've seen this hyper-liberal progressive mindset that by simply being a Christian as a witness, and it's kind of the social justice gospel, you know, there's a hurricane in, in Thailand or whatever, and so we send a thousand dollars, or we go serve people and we give them food and we do it. The gospel K Russo evangelism is proclaimed. So you can have Muslims who will outserve you, Mormons who do outserve you, who memorize the scripture more than you. You can have atheists who serve whoever around the world more than you. That isn't the gospel. The gospel is proclaimed in word and deed. Why are you serving? If Mother Teresa outserved everyone but never talked about Jesus, it was all in vain. It's in word and deed. Jesus sent them to go twos and in 70. Why did he send them out? To go and proclaim. So, Brian, as a skater, why do you try and live the way you do? Because of my Lord and Savior. Pero, why do you do a podcast? Because of Jesus. Why are you here giving us food? Because God sent me, because God so loved the world, we've acted as though the good news is bad news because, and you started to say this a minute ago, it's hard for people. It is offensive. It is a mm. struggle. We're given the Holy Spirit and he's called the comforter and I want my comfort, but it's because we need comfort. I want my help. Not to just sit on the floor and flap around and see signs, miracles, and wonders. It's because the 300 years the church was birthed, it was going into a nation where it would be killed, crucified, burned upside down, and suffer. Their prayers wow. went, help my podcast reach 10 million people. That's great. <laughs> if, this, if this podcast went to 100 million people, praise God. They're going to hear what we're talking about. God will mm. redeem that. Their prayers were like, we're probably going to die in this nation, so pray for us for strength. Mm. That's a prayer. Yeah. I'm not, you know, and I'm saying, and, I, and, I, and don't think that doesn't convict all of us. I'm going to go get chai on the way home or work from my house or, you know, we've got it easy. But my point is to those listening, be a godly dad, be a godly mom and be a godly sibling. You, you hate your boss, witness to them or love on them so that when they come to Christian, they might not be as hard to deal with. But we, you know, I heard someone preaching the other day, something that was so radical and I have to go back and study this and it's beautiful. You know the story. Like, 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 why did Jonah not want to go to Nineveh? Like, what was it? Why was it? And I heard the guy preach and say, you know what? There was a prophecy that a foreign nation would come against Jonah and those people. So if I knew someone was coming through the door right now with a gun and they're going to kill you, why am I going to open the door? If I knew there was a nation, let's put mm -hmm. it into real time. Let's say there's random people coming up through the border and they were really radicalized from other nations and they really hate everyone. Do I really want an open border? And what God is saying to Jonah is, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah's like, I'm not going. I know the prophecy. And God's like, are you willing to love those who may hate you? Jo isn't, isn't it crazy? I'd never, yes. I'd never understood. I've never thought, why did he hate them? Mm. I just thought he was being a punk. <clears throat> and he gets <clears throat> under the tree and he's mad because of what happens under the tree. And God's like, oh, this is your issue? This is what, your, your, one microphone isn't working today. This is your issue? <laughs> why you're hating a nation? Mm. And I'm just saying that to say, guys, we're always going to wrestle. The flesh is always going to be weak. But... If I really want to see God move, am I willing to go with who? Whoever's, like, I have in the foggiest idea what the rest of my day is going to be like, but the Lord does. I've been given the help. I've been empowered. I can bear the fruit of the Spirit. We need you as Christians to be the salt and the light because that's who we're called to be. And it's not legalism. It's not religious preaching. It's don't you want them to know Jesus? Don't you want your crazy grandma or your alcoholic uncle or that person you hate? To, to know Jesus. So how do we live this out? I came to faith. Skateboarding was a platform. I began to do what I'm doing. To answer your question, I began to get invited to share, to speak, to preach. I wrote a book on marriage. I do a podcast. I made a couple of films. I live month to month. I raise full-time support. My, my church said, Brian, wow. if we put you in an office, you're crazy. We want you to be a missions partner and we're just going to support you a little bit and invite God to support the rest. And so I literally... My week is like, I'll come here, hang out with you. I might be speaking somewhere. I might be doing a marriage conference, might be going overseas. It's so random, but it's the heart. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's the heart of Elijah on Mount Carmel. It's calling mm -hmm. down, what, what is God doing? It, it, it's John the Baptist. It's very evangelistically focused or preaching, teaching. 
So to those listening, what I'm saying should encourage you to be evangelistic, to know that I'm not sitting in the daycare. I'm not mm. at the car dealership. I'm not sitting there taking care of your ill grandparents. You are. And mm. the same anointing on me is the same anointing on Jesus. And I think about the Apostle Paul, as much as he's in glory worshiping, to be absent from the flesh is present with the Father. If you could say to Paul today, do you want to come back today and, and take Beto's car or Brian's life and reach people today? in an instant to do that and give God glory. Imagine what they would do. Mm. Imagine what Elijah yeah. would do. Imagine what the wow. woman with the, with the two mites would do. Imagine what the woman healed. Imagine when the woman at the well, what she would do when she went to an abortion clinic or something. It's like, mm. it's that, and that's staring ourselves up. That's what Elijah did when he was discouraged. He thought back to God and the way he moved on the mountain and the way he moved in the fire. And God says, no, 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 it, it's a still small voice. He's with you, right? Think about this. If Jesus walked in here right now, we would stop the podcast and we would go, what are we doing, Lord? Let's go to Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Afghanistan in, in a pair of shorts with no weapons and just preach. We'd do it. But Jesus said radically, Beto, Brian, Christian podcast, whoever you are, it's better that I go away so I send another. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Holy Spirit sitting oh. with you Oof. and sitting with me is as adequate even better, not your wits, Lord, I'm not saying that, <laughs> for us to go. It's radical. It's so radical. Like So basically, you are 2,000% qualified for what wow. you think you are. I've said it before. You're invincible till God takes you. Think oh. about that. Yeah. Think of, you want to go to Afghanistan? I mean, like, I'm just saying that's the God we serve, yet we're like, and even the serpent, Satan, He's like a worm in our eyes when we see him in Revelation. Like, all right. So we wrestle with the flesh. Guys, I know it's crazy. My my wife's mom passed away and we faced hard times and my mom and we have bills in life, but like God, like, do I really believe? And think about that verse, the lilies and the beds of the air. Am I gonna let them trust God that He's gonna provide more than I am? Yeah. Am I gonna have the kind of faith that outfaiths those things that like what is a sparrow to the Lord? He's not made in God's image, not Imago Dei. What about the lilies? They're not, though they're beautiful, but you're made in his image. Anyone listening to hearing mom, dad, whatever, you're made in his image, and it could be terrible. A gentleman on my podcast the other day, his son died from an overdose. His daughter was murdered by her husband while she was on the phone with him and the wife. And it, Pastor Joe Fiore from his place right here in Westminster, it's a radical story. You know, I'll send you the link. But just, I'm saying that to say, I couldn't even believe what I was hearing from him. And he was saying, Brian, why didn't God save her? Why did I hear, hear her say someone's in the house? Why did I hear a shout and three gunshots and she didn't make it? And it's so radical, but God is good. This world is cursed and fallen. What you are seeing is the evidence of it. All creation cries out for the revealing of the sons of God. But this world, it's falling to pieces, but God is good. So the longest probably answer ever that was to what the people do, get in your Bible, let the Holy Spirit lead you, Romans eight fourteen, and open up your mouth for the king. Most people aren't even living into what God has because they're controlling their lives. Like seeking first his kingdom is that. Mm. Should you do a podcast? Amen. You've got gifts and talents. This room's amazing. What is it for us to hang out for two hours? Redeem it. But let's make sure you're listening that God isn't like, this is the only thing you do. There's a dude in Home Depot that you can reach today. Mm. So, <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. That, that was epic. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing. Let's end on this. Um, I mean, as part of kind of like plugging in your podcast your podcast is called the foolishness podcast right and yep. you've been doing it for a while yep. but how can we tie that i would love to like tie that together with maybe like the future of evangelism and yeah. we're in like you said you know this is the christian podcast we have like cameras and you no know, my i'm yep. very adamant about like doing reels and posting stuff on yeah. social media to share good yeah. news right and to have conversations yeah um But then, you know, we kind of like started the episode by saying you were shadow banned, you know, from yeah. having like a massive following to like yeah. all this like you know, weird stuff happening online to you yeah. like saying, you know, share the gospel and be loving and telling yeah. the truth in love. So all of that, um, what would be your, 
Uh, and then what you're doing with the Foolishness podcast, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, what do you think is the future of evangelism as if you pair those together? You know, maybe like podcasting, yeah. utilizing media. Do you see anything yeah. like that or anything out, even outside of that that you would... Yeah, you know, I mean, tell people how to leverage well, as an evangelist yourself. Yeah, well, Paul said, "Become all things to all men." <clears throat> so the danger in how we think is we think I'm in Christian youth group. I'm going to be the most famous person ever, and when I get there, I'm going to talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'll get to the Grammys, I'll get to the Oscars, I'll get to the wherever, and then on stage, I'll say thank God. And that's not always the gospel. We see many mm -hmm. celebrities, many high level, you know cults and stuff i won't even say them for the sake of your podcast getting banned just the buzzwords but they'll talk about god all day what i remember hearing was an evangelist called luis palau and he's in his 80s he died a few years ago beautiful <laughs> man argentinian and he's doing this conference one day and we're all friends there's hundreds of evangelists there and he's like let me speak to you guys about the phone you don't know what to do with the phone oh we shouldn't use the phone don't use media and he says a guy's on here And he's looking for boobies. <laughs> and you show up with Jesus. Mm. Get him Jesus. And his point is, wow. use everything. Use mm. e If you say, I have to have the best podcast in the world to be relevant, you don't have to have anything. Mm. Even your qualification, none of it even matters. Go for it, Joe Rogan. I mean, I hope he comes to faith, you know, with Eddie Bravo, hopefully sharing some of the conspiracy kingdom things. But my point is, how do we redeem all this? Become all things to all men. Um Paul wow. in the marketplace, we read, I think, in Acts 17, 18, 19, Paul went into the synagogue and he proclaimed the truth, as was his custom. Hey, Beto, we're going to go over there. I'm going to share. I'm going to open up the scriptures. I'm going to relate, um, relate what Jesus said and did. I'm going to teach you. But also in the, ma in the marketplace, where you happen to be there, you could be in and out today. And someone's sitting there and you're buying them food saying, God bless you. Hey, do you know about Jesus? That could be the biggest witness than this getting a hundred million views. Mm. But why not do both? And I love and I challenge people with this, and I'll and I'll get to the point. But Paul, um, if you look at the life of Jesus, I said it three and a half years. Look at Paul. Paul shows up to places, and there's a common theme. The place was flipped upside down. People were mad at him. People came to faith. Then we see him go into Mars Hill in this region, and he shows up. And when he shows up, you know what they say? They don't say, here's Paul from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised the eighth day, who knows his stuff, who's brilliant, his intellect, he's good looking, he's blah, blah, blah. They don't say any of that. They say, who's this babbler? There's nothing he brings with him. There's nothing. It's not that you're Lecrae. It's not that you're Tim Tebow. It's not that you're whatever, wrote for Tony Hawk. Who's this babbler? And he begins to preach about Christ and the resurrection. Paul's focus is cross, Christ, crucified. Mm. That's the power of the gospel. So to wow. all of us, if you are a media wizard, if you and me, you, you know, married my sister or something, you could run all this and I showed up and you did this all. Thank you. Amen. I believe it's going to go further. But even foolishness, I simply do it through a laptop because I'm so busy. I'll just have a guest on like, hey, let's talk. I'll set it up in my bedroom or the kitchen. I've got higher quality equipment, you know, a couple hundred dollars, and I just put it online to go, someone could listen to me today, and they could go onto that podcast and find the one episode on anxiety, and that's all they ever got from the podcast, or on someone drinking, or on parenting, or whatever. That's as much as it is, but I feel like I was meant to do that. Mm. Someone showed up to my house, a friend of mine, uh, Carrie, and she said, hey, it's the end of the year, it's Christmas, I want something, I didn't know what there was, and I seen this expensive microphone, I feel like God said, give that to Brian. Wow. At the same time, a friend was showing up to my house, driving from Chino, an hour or so, Isaac, and he's coming over to put me on his podcast, and he goes, I feel like the Lord told me you need to do a podcast. I was like, I haven't got the time, and so you know what he did? He said, I'll drive out here. He would drive out every week. He'd finish his job from like seven to, to five, drive out to my house, set it all up. And, you know, praise God for him and her and all of that. But just just let the Lord lead, do what you're doing, but redeem it. You are missing out if you're not living into what the what God has for the kingdom. And you're you're definitely laboring in vain. You know, if I'm honest, we are a slave to the biggest idol that is comfort. And, mm -hmm. oh, I want life to be good. Why? Because I have the white picket fence, because I have the bank account, because my wife does what I say, because my husband listens to me as I want. Now I have comfort. No, you just created your kingdom. 
Can you have wow. comfort when the government goes crazy? Can you have comfort when Second Corinthians 4, 4, Satan is the God of this age? Can you have comfort when you're carrying trauma from your past that no one else understands? But God, but Jesus, can you have comfort that day? I'm bound to Huntington. I'm bound to my family. I'm, I'm flowing on this podcast. Okay, this is comfort. What if God's like, I'm switching this up? Can I have that kind of faith? He did it to Elijah. He did it to Jonah. He does it a lot. You know, we see in the New Testament, Peter missed it, denied the Lord three times. So, you know, get on with Foolishness Podcast. It's You can find it online for what I'm doing. I travel as a missionary. Again, I don't have a salary. I raise full-time support. I'm all over the place speaking. I don't ask anyone to bring me anywhere. If churches hit me up, okay, Lord, this is wow. you. I just, that's as basic <coughs> as it is, you know, so. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so we'll plug your your um, Instagram and all of that on the episode. <laughs> so let's end on this. Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you my, back to my emojis, yeah. as you see on the screen. Yes. So I love to summarize the episode with each emoji. Okay, yeah. either summarize or thinking of the future. So I think in this case, thinking of evangelism in general. Yeah. Uh, and it could be anything, right? Like if, if you don't feel like it fits, yeah. you know, move on to something else. But uh, we'll kind of like recap or think of the future yeah. one by one. Okay. okay. So recapping the episode or thinking of the future, what is the most blasphemous idea you can think of? Ever? Yes. Like in all of, in all of creation and everything in Just the world. The, yes. Yes. It's that Jesus isn't divine. And mm. that's it because Matthew, Mark, Luke write their gospels we have. They're around for many years. And then John closes the canon <clears throat> of the four gospels by filling in already the deception of the Gnostics and all the rest. Mm. And it was always to tear down Jesus. If you were Muslim, it was Judas on the cross, not Jesus. If you're wow. Mormon, Jesus and Serpent of Brothers. If you're Jehovah's Witness, it's Michael and Jesus are the same person. The biggest heresy is that Jesus is not who he says he is, not the Son of God, didn't die in our place, blood is imperfect. And I'll go as far as to say this, I believe when the Bible says no one can see God and live, that nowhere did God show up in the Old Testament aside from he passed over the rock and showed his shadow. I believe all the other times he shows up, it's the person of Jesus, it's the Christophany. Because mm. even when Jesus speaks of Abraham, he talks about Abraham not would not kill him or, or oppose him. And they're talking about you're barely of age. I think what's missed is that in the text, when did Jesus ever encounter Abraham? I think that was him who encountered him in the Old Testament with wow. the other two. And he showed up and he had a meal with him. But he wasn't incarnate. He wasn't born of a child yet. Mm -hmm. He didn't come as a baby in diaper. He just appeared as he is. So I think wow. that, so the most blasphemous thing is that Jesus is not God incarnate. Am I God? Yeah. Wow. Okay, great. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Skeptical. What are you skeptical of or where do you see skepticism played out? I'm skeptical of every single thing in this world because this world is a conspiracy. Um, I've mm. said it before, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Satan's the God of the age. <clears throat> He is a deceiver. He's been a liar from the beginning. He's the father of lies. So if you say, um, is the earth flat? Um, I don't care, but if it is, then it makes sense that everyone's lying about everything else. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, the whole thing about male and female, this whole war against each other, there's your deception, the whole alien thing. There's no aliens. It's fallen. It's demonic. It's deception. This is radical, and this will challenge people's theology. We refer to God as, you know, Adonai, Yahweh, Yehovah, Elohim. But whenever you read of other beings in the Old Testament, even fallen, they're referred to as Elohim. So when you have Samuel appearing and there's Nathan the prophet and all this stuff, he refers to him as Elohim. To me, what's behind the scenes is deception. The fallen ones, all they're doing, the false idea of aliens, the impregnation, even in Genesis, the serpent idea. How did aliens supposedly look? Serpentine for some reason. There's something in that. And I love this one. I'm saying a lot of conspiracy stuff because it's fun to say. I'll play this on my podcast later. I know my listeners will love this. I'll do it to boost what you're doing <laughs> anyway. But I'm saying this to say, if you hear about all that's going on, the Bible says we can encounter angels unawares. So can we encounter fallen angels? Could there be fallen angels running the world, doing things behind the scene? When Bible talks about Satan again, 
being the god of this age. So I think everything is deceptive. And what was what was the word you used at the start? Skeptical. Skeptical. Yeah. So I'm skeptical of everything. Well, Brian, what do you do? Nothing. I wake up today. You <clears throat> message me. We're hanging out. I'm gonna go get food. It does not change one bit. Mm. And and I'll say this is just funny. The biggest thing I ever heard about the Earth not being flat and why it's not flat is because someone said if the Earth was flat, cats would have pushed everything off the edge by now. <laughs> But you know, could it be a dome like a snow globe? Yeah. The firmament, all these things. I don't know. It doesn't matter. God didn't tell us, mm. so we know what He told us: the gospel to reach and seek and save that which was lost. Love it. Okay, uh, inspired emoji. Where did you see inspiration? What gives you hope? I cry a lot. You know what's funny is I'll see anything that's like some motivational. I seen a thing this morning, and it was it was this black kid on the floor. I'm saying it because the movie's about a black family, mm. and it might have been the story of Ray. And um, was it Ray Charles? And as a kid, he comes in the room and he's crying for his mom, and his mom's there cooking, and they've set it up, you know, like they're in poverty and all the rest. And as she, beautiful black woman, you know, and she looks over, and I'm sure there's some truth to, to this or or a principle. And she doesn't make a noise, so he has to learn to fend for himself. And in that, I'm like, wow, this is there's a there's a beauty in the strength of that woman and standing in her place to to, to honor and um, bring up her son. But obviously, it's just things like this, like like you read the Bible and there's not you know there's funny stuff in it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Elijah mocking the prophets, like maybe your God's out to lunch, and we hear these funny things, but reading 66 chap you know 66 books that's no illustrations and it's not meant to make you laugh the bible uh, good worship just com just biblical conversation just just any of that is so motivating immediately mm. like fills that's you good. with it just poof. that's yeah. an evidence the spirit's inside of you you know you just you thrive in it so love it okay and that kind of fits maybe the the next emoji because the next emoji is holy yeah so what's something holy what's a holy idea according to brian sumner you know <laughs> i would just say the hard thing for me is because you're a skater and you're a perfectionist and maybe that's the ocd from when i was younger or you know the bruce lee re re routines there is a, a, a desire to make sure everything's always the right way which is good But then when you struggle in those things, you can kind of like beat yourself up, you know, it's legalism or, what, or whatever. Paul said, wretched man that I am, not who I used to be, that I am. But don't feed the flesh, you know, focus on the things of the spirit. So I guess it's just, you know, really learning to abide in God. The more I'm around all the Christians, they say, man, the, the longer I've walked with the Lord, the more I realize how much grace and mercy I need, mm. but how there's now no condemnation, Romans 8.1, for those in Christ. So holiness doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you abide in that which is perfect. It means you depend upon his righteousness. So some of those who are listening, who are beaten up, who are struggling, who the flesh has gotten the best of you, and um, be bent towards the Lord. You know, grab a hold of get in the i sat with a girl the other day at our jiu-jitsu who's going through so much hell and she's just in the middle of her life and she's like struggling and i said look we're sitting on this couch and everyone's rolling in front of us you know it's just the end of the class i'll sit down people know i'm a pastor only if they come sit with me they ask questions i said you're sitting on this couch right now and despite your life grace and mercy is sitting with you you get up you can walk in that grace and mercy you get in your car what you put on You know, is it the Christian radio? It doesn't make you a Christian, but that will minister to you. Mm. You stir up some of those old songs that you know. Um, you know, when you're in public and you hear someone playing worship, like in Santa Monica or Huntington Pier, it's different. It, it, it's in an atmosphere that you don't expect it. So I just say the bendings towards the Lord, open up the Bible, letting new verses hit you. That's it. Mm. So Awesome. Okay, uh, last one is the divine emoji. So what's a divine idea? What's like the highest of highest ideas that you can think of? Well, the Bible says think on things that are above. So that's that's true, you know, the things of God. Honestly, and I never really, I mean, I think about it, but it's that someone listening would just trust the Lord, whether it's with faith, salvation, or just what he says about you, because that's hard to do. You're tangible, you're physical. I can go home today and tell people about your studio and the microphones we use, and then we laughed and goofed off and that. But for you to really just have that faith, honors God the most, um, 
in, in anything. You know what I mean? Like in the if this building, heaven forbid, something happened today or the worst news, the trusting in God to me is the greatest act of, of a miracle of faith, you know, mm. like Jesus spat and put dirt in their eyes. Amazing. You know, you fed the 5,000. Amazing. But Brian, I don't have your testimony or this crazy person's. No, your testimony could be that you're pretty much the Partridge family and you still need Jesus. That's that's the greatest to me is that God and what Jesus' blood. And think about this. Cain kills Abel and God says his blood cries out to me. What, what does that even mean? What is the mm. blood doing? Like, is it coded? Is it DNA? Is it Hebrew, like scholars have said? Is it speaking? And then you get to Jesus, and we read of Jesus, the second Adam. His blood speaks a better word. So what was mm. Cain's blood saying? Death, judgment, sin, um, guilt, shame. Um, what was Jesus' blood saying? <laughs> Life, resurrection, love, you know, peace. So to me, the greatest thing is just accepting that because we know i had a friend on the podcast the other week and he's like man if you knew the things i think just waking up in the morning you wouldn't have it have me on the podcast and he's just saying as a man he's not saying he's off what i've heard pastors say i'm not even a christian till i've drank my coffee you know and read my bible <laughs> but the point is the trusting in god with wherever you are that's the greatest thing to me because mm -hmm. he's a father my kid came in here right now swearing shouting at me saying the craziest stuff i'd be like what are you doing but it doesn't change my love for him mm. doesn't change who he is to me you know what i mean so i think if you've got that relationship with god but you could be weak and you could be spiritually immature and you could be fighting in the flesh so you're gonna you're gonna have consequences you know you're gonna live a certain mm. way but trusting him in all of that i don't know who our listeners are you sound like brian right now blasting out scriptures because i'm motivated and god probably wants to speak to some people mm. maybe you don't Maybe you're that kid who's like, what have I done? How trusting God right now, that that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Wow. Great. Okay. That's a divine idea. What about <clears throat> the princess one? That's, that? that's a divine. Oh, yeah. What was the one before it? <laughs> uh, holy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We so you, we went through all of them. <laughs> okay. So we come to the end of the episode, man, with some like nice background music. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So plug your... No, if people want to donate to what you do yeah. and say support it, uh, your website or yeah. Instagram was the best place. Just go to briansummer.net and listen, I never would have done this. There's a there's hundred people around us in Costa Mesa I could have sat with and I wanted to do business stuff and the rest. And our church said, you need to step out. First Corinthians 9.14 says, God has commanded, commanded those who live out the gospel make the living from it so people sat with me and said brian just raise monthly support so you can go wherever do whatever you're not like a monkey needing people to pay you like i don't have to go anywhere for anything i just raise support and that's as far as it is so if you feel called want to support know what i'm doing briansumner.net and everything's there and if you're struggling in marriage i wrote a book called never fails it's on amazon mm. super cheap And there's loads of YouTube and stuff. So, yeah. Love it. Well, thank you for being on the show. This has been an epic conversation. Lots of value. I want to invite people who are uh, maybe listening, watching, whatever you're watching. Maybe you're on, on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe you're on Spotify. Follow the podcast. Mm. Give a positive review. If you made it all the way here, you know, why not go the extra mile and give us a positive <laughs> review? Uh, this is something maybe a little bit new I'm trying now this year. I've been doing this podcast for like four years wow. almost. Wow. And I, I want to do more in person episodes, you know, so yeah. talking with pastors or nonprofits yeah, and yeah. things like that. So thank you so much, man. This is, this is wonderful. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. And my guess. <laughs> There we go. Sweet.